Next, we are dealing with the state of the quarterbacks going into the playoffs. Are we ready? Let's talk about it. Boss Capital Sports, where your voice matter. Let's get it. Well, um, obviously dealing with the quarterbacks, obviously that's going to lead off with Dak Prescott. Uh, that's pretty easy to uh, see. But just real quick, um, just to recap, we already tackled – uh, the readiness of the offensive line and kind of the dilemmas as well as good things for the offensive line going into the playoffs. Then we tackled running backs and then now we're tackling the quarterback. So as you can see, we going with the offense first. It, it's just appropriate because offense starting this year was allegedly going to be the people that were supposed to carry us to our playoff hopes as well as our Super Bowl hopes so it's just appropriate to continue that but when I look at quarterback just like I talked about with the running backs let me start off with the coach Doug and I'm gonna be honest uh I think when you're dealing with Doug Doug um just being all the way honest I'm not really liking him as a coach especially the way that I judge coaches because remember I consistently say I judge coaches by the group so I look at the group to say if you're a good coach or not first I didn't like how Schultz and Jarwin was playing when he was a tight end coach they were sucking win they was not playing good when he was their coach and then Dak is different so one of the best thing ways to explain is that when I think about Doug I see somebody that's leaving some meat on the bone being all the way honest I think I think it's it's he leaving something to be um wanting like I, I I feel like we can do better as a quarterback coach I'm being all the way honest uh I'm just being all the way honest with you and I'm gonna throw y'all a curveball on this one some y'all probably wasn't expecting but I miss John Kidner I think John Kidner was a low-key Dan Quinn to to that like his hands on approach uh the guy's guy type of coach and he had a a good history with the Dallas Cowboys and was always ready plus he was a he has a teaching background teaching certified uh he has a he has a lot of natural pedigrees and plus he Played the position in the NFL. And was he as good as Romo? No. But his stats was just as good as Romo. You know, so which is saying a lot about him. He's the type of guy that's almost just like Dak where they max out their capabilities. Like they are kind of one of the same. Both of those guys are blue collar guys that they're going to give all that they have uh, to get the most out of the game. And that's to me the best description of John Kidna. I would want him back and closer to the building. Obviously, it's too late for that. But just kind of thinking out loud, just throwing out ideas. That's something that I, even going forward, I wouldn't be mad at that. I don't think that fits the politics of the Dallas Cowboys. I think once they kind of side on a the guy, they, they go rock with that. Plus, it's been rumors. That Kelly Moore was one of the people that um, made John Kidna become expendable. I don't know if that's true, but all I know is Dak's best years and his mechanics was at his best, even during hard times and the rest when he was with Kidna. I think Kidna brought out a better side of Dak and a better side of Dak, better than Doug is doing right now because I get the feeling just being all the way on his deck is really on some teach his self type of stuff and I'm going to say this when it comes to that uh, some of y'all going to trip out when I say this but um, I mean this I think also Dak is um, leaving some meat on the bone I think and some of y'all I know y'all going to be surprised at that like like how can you say that <laughs> is leaving meat on the bone <laughs> like 
with as good as he did and i get it that's shocking like you hear it really dak with this year left some meat on. yeah he left he left some meat on the bone of me i really do i uh, feel that like now i can i can already see and sense the pushback especially since he broke a franchise record in touchdowns you know i mean that's a very big deal obviously nobody taking away from what he accomplished but i think dak is so good he can still be better and there's nothing wrong with saying that i think dak still could be better to me it was one side of dak that didn't seem the same this year is when times got hard he was really kind of like the comeback kid he was the guy in the fourth quarter in overtime it started getting to where you almost expected him to pull it off because he was consistently in the clutch, usually able to, you know, had a game winning drive, very cool under pressure. That really wasn't the case this year. When they had bad games, they just continued to snowball into the same old bad games. The former deck used to be the deck that maybe will start slow, but you know, but th then he would get in his rhythm and then he would just wear you out. And then by the time it was the fourth quarter, he would be just just burning hot. This deck seems to need to get in a rhythm, especially by targeting guys that get clear separation like Cooper. This this deck is steady. This deck. Yes, he broke records, but there's another gear to this deck. And I know, I know, I know. It sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. I, I can already see people just shocked at what I'm saying right now. Like they are really like, are you really seeing saying that a record breaking year was not good enough? I'm not saying not good enough. And I appreciate obviously him performing to the level above our best quarterbacks to ever play this game. But I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Yeah, it really was some meat that was left on the bone this year, especially on the road. So the question is, in my opinion, was it play calling or was it Dak or was it a combination of both? I think it was a combination of both. I think Dak is still developing and a lot of people <laughs> don't really believe that he should be since this is year six but i do want to remind y'all that romo said himself that it took him seven years of starting before the game actually really began to slow down for him so it is yes it is natural to be in year six and still getting better so where i want to see that go going into the future and uh, what I took away from this year is I want Dak to grow a deeper command of being able to take over the offense fully to where he can almost run it like Peyton Manning, a hundred percent independent of his play caller to where he can go hurry up high tempo, whatever he wants to do. It's in his command to do. That's where I want to see Dak go. Now going into the playoffs, uh, I think Dak is ready, and I think we know how to dig to get Dak going. But we looking at not even just Dak; we also go look at Cooper Rush because we looking at the whole unit and the readiness and preparedness. So when we dealing with Cooper Rush, you dealing with a guy that's similar to Dak. He's gritty. Both of them are gritty guys. They both are blue collar guys. They, they are workers. They, they, they max out everything that they have. And obviously the Minnesota game was a major game to help boost Cooper Rush's confidence, you know. And yes, you didn't see a strong arm, but you did see intelligence to the point of just actually just throwing with common sense. Because one of the main things that he did is he intentionally target Cooper a lot. So even though his arm wasn't completely accurate, Cooper was winning so much, obviously with his route running, even with a bad ball, like with what you see right here, 
where Cooper had to actually slow down to get this ball. Like, if this would have been a better thrown ball, this would have been touchdown. Like, he, sh he should have still been running. Like, he had that much separation from that route, and it was clear. But he made the calculated decision to continue to target Amari Cooper. And, obviously, we remember what happened. Cooper was also the person that was the game-winning catch. So, you know, and that trend is still, you know, what – works is going after your best guy you treating the number one like a number one if you treat the number one like a number one you tend to get pretty good results so going into the playoffs i feel like even if that got a little bit banged up i do feel good to know that even cooper rush might be able to come in let's say if Dak had a concussion or if he you know has something to where he needed to be out maybe for a little while maybe even the virus i still think that cooper rush is good enough to win games especially if we play as a team but what Dak to me needs to do is he needs to be i think very assertive and make sure that all the coaches know that his primary guy because he has a tendency to like to spread it around uh romo wasn't like that romo had his guys and he had no qualms about that romo favorite guys who also earned those targets was obviously Witten and obviously Dez. He was going to go to those guys in the clutch. Dak is a little bit different. Dak trusts all his guys. But I think Dak needs to be a little bit more assertive on making sure that Kellen Moore is putting in the game plans to target Cooper early because that's the pattern, especially this year because we talking about this year what are the things that we took away from 2021 um and what are the lessons that we taken into the playoffs and the lessons say to me get Dak in a rhythm early so two ways to get Dak in the rhythm is take pressure off of him but obviously running the ball but that's not it it's also going at your best receiver which is cooper if you do that I think you're going to get the most out of Dak and you're not going to be leaving that meat on the bone. And you're going to have a consistent offense because we're going to need to be consistent now because all the teams that we're getting ready to play are good. So even though, yes, you do see a franchise record, no, I do not want to leave meat on that bone. We cannot leave meat on that bone going into the playoffs. No, we need to have a solid plan that tends to work consistently with Dak and the number one thing is going after his outlets I would say with shows that get him in a rhythm but mainly what get him in a rhythm is targeting Cooper so so yeah we going through all the videos we're going to give you by the end of the week you will have a full breakdown of the entire Dallas Cowboys we talking everything so obviously we we, we tackled the quarterbacks but previous videos which we also have in the description we tackled you know the running backs obviously we also tackled the offensive line and gave ideas about that so this is all about putting ideas out there so make sure y'all get y'all sure on that's the key that's how to make your voice matter uh obviously we also want you to share and like and subscribe whether if you're on facebook or if you're on youtube it don't matter Either way, make sure you like and subscribe. Even if you don't donate or cash out Boss Cabo Sports, the main way to continue to help us, because obviously we do need those cash apps, and thank y'all for everybody who continue to do that. But the main thing is to continue to hit that like and that share button. Share this to different groups, especially these videos that register to you. But just share this content. That's one of the best things to do and hit that like button. But this is Boss Cowboy Sports where your voice matter and y'all stay up. Peace.